Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about Dutch roll. How Dutch is it actually? Uh, why does it happen? Can it be dangerous? And what is a your damper? Stay tuned. Point three one zero one six. Everyone right. Right on. Third line three one right. Delta two six. Two two. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, we're in the middle of the holiday season, so why don't you gift the gift of knowledge, of curiosity to someone? If you use this link here below, you'll get 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant. And by giving this, you will not be giving something that is materialistic or that hurts the environment. Instead, it will be something that someone can actually use. So, check it out. Right guys, so we're gonna be talking about the Dutch roll. Now, Dutch roll is a really fascinating thing, okay? And in order to understand it, you really do need to understand quite a lot about aerodynamics. But don't worry, I'm here to explain it in a way that you will actually understand it, okay? In order to understand it, we need to start with some basic aerodynamics. So the aircraft is moving around three different axes. You might have heard of these before. You have the pitch axis, which pitches the aircraft's nose up and down. You have the roll axis, where we use the aileron and the spoilers to roll the aircraft like this. And then you have the yaw axis. That's where you use the rudder to move it around the yaw axis in this motion like that. Now, these three axes we are constantly combining to make sure that the aircraft is flown in a nice, safe and comfortable way. Um, but there's also something called stability. Okay? Uh, stability, easily explained, is the aircraft's ability to return after a disturbance. So, for example, in the roll axis, if the aircraft would suddenly be rolled to the right, we need it, or we want it to, be able to come back to its wings level state. Okay? The same goes for all axes. If there is a sudden disturbance, if it is stable enough, it will, after a few oscillations, get back to its natural kind of wings level straight ahead flight. Now, when the um, aircraft manufacturers build an aircraft, they want the aircraft to have this stability along all of the axes. But the stability cannot be too strong because if it's too stable, well then the aircraft will not be able to turn or will struggle to turn, right? But it cannot be unstable either because then it's going to be extremely hard to hand fly it. And an example of that is, for example, fighter jets. They are built uh, knowingly, either unstable or neutrally stable in order to be able to do very quick maneuvers. But in order to be able to fly those fighter jets, especially the more modern ones, you need to have supercomputers that's constantly calculating what to do and what, how to interpret the inputs of the pilot to make sure that the aircraft doesn't lose control. Okay. Now, air transport category aircraft, they tend to be fairly stable platforms. But the stability is not equal in all different roll and yaw and pitch movements. And that's why we can get Dutch roll. So Dutch roll tends to happen uh, at higher altitudes and they happen because we have swept wings on the, um, on the uh, for example, the Boeing 737. I'll give you an example. Let's say that I am sitting, I'm flying the aircraft uh, manually for whatever reason. And I move over uh, to, to take something off the center panel and I accidentally hit the yoke. All right. So the aircraft starts rolling towards the right. Now, if no other inputs are made, if the aircraft rolls over to the right, it will automatically, since the lift vector from the wings always goes straight up from the wings, if you roll, your lift vector will then move towards the right in that case, which will give you a sidewards momentum as well. So as the aircraft starts rolling, it also introduces a slight yaw because of that, um, that side vector, right? Now, as the aircraft starts rolling to the right and now yawing to the right, this means that the relative flow of air will now come from the right slightly. And when you have swept wing um, aircraft, 
The only part of the wing that is creating lift is the wing where the wind goes perpendicular over the cord of the wing. Okay, So this means that as the aircraft is now rolling and yawing, the wind will come more straight onto the right wing, the downward wing, than on the left side. And since the angle is now better on the right wing than on the left wing, the right wing will be creating more lift and that will counteract the roll. So it's stable. It's, that's the stability coming in. It's being disturbed to the right because it's now yawing like that. It is now coming back into its original state. So it's roll stable. But there is an issue here. If you know your aerodynamics, you know that any time that we take out more lift from one wing, it will also create more drag. And that's what's going to happen. So as the aircraft is now rolling to the right and the right wing is starting to make more lift in order to get back up again, it's creating more drag and the drag will force the aircraft to yaw even more. Okay, so the aircraft is now rolling, yawing more. And as it's yawing more, that relative wind that I was talking about, because of the yaw, is now creating an angle of attack on the fin as well. Now the fin works just like a wing. So if you get an angle of attack onto the fin, it will also create lift. So that is the yaw stability coming in. Okay, so now it's rolling, it's yawing, the lift is being created on the right hand side of the fin, which is counteracting the yaw, and the roll is being counteracted. So this is how stability is working. Right? The problem here, of course, is that the roll stability is much more powerful than the yaw stability. Wings are bigger, the forces are bigger. So that initial increase of lift tends to go over. So it doesn't just go back to level flight, it over rolls it a little bit. And the yaw that comes from the, uh, from the fin is a little bit too little, a little bit too late. So it always comes in a bit later, which means that the aircraft will now be rolling over to the left instead. The same thing will happen. It will yaw, it will create lift on the fin, it will roll back again. And each one of these oscillations will become smaller and smaller. But the oscillation itself is quite uncomfortable. Because as you can imagine, the aircraft is rolling, yawing, rolling, yawing like that, as it's oscillating back. And that movement, that is the Dutch roll. Okay, you mid mid so far? Good. So why would a movement like that be called a Dutch roll? Well, actually, this is fascinating. It goes back to the beginning of the 20th century, where, um, where we started to use swept wing aircraft, larger transport category aircraft, and they, the aerodynamics, and the people who were working with the aerodynamics quite quickly understood that this would happen. And they needed a, a word to, to kind of explain this phenomenon, this movement. And the easiest way when we humans talk to each other is to explain something new with something that we know, something that we understand. And the motion was very similar to what you see from a skater, someone who's skating. Of course, the most famous skaters come, came from Holland, they're Dutch. So... They said, well, it looks like a Dutch skater, doesn't it? Coming, rolling from side to side like this. Hence, the word Dutch roll came about and that's where it came from. So what can we do about this then? Well, this is where the yaw damper comes in, right? The yaw damper is basically a computer called the stall management yaw damper computer that sits and it feels the aircraft movement. It feels the roll, it feels the yaw, and it inputs that information to the rudder and automatically moves the rudder to counteract this motion. So if the stall management yaw damper computer feels a movement, a disturbance in the roll, well then it will automatically and quickly move the rudder in order to stabilize the aircraft, okay? So instead of having the rudder or the, the effect of the fin coming in too little too late, the rudder is now coming in doing exactly what it should, which brings the aircraft back into stable flight immediately. And it works with tiny little input 
all the time as we were flying along our route, right? We, on the older aircraft, we actually had a little um, yaw damper indicator that showed how much the rudder was moving. But to be honest, you could sit and you can stare at that thing and you would only see some small, small, small variations. Because if you input the rudder early enough when you have a disturbance, it's basically nothing. You as a passenger will never notice it. We, the pilot, never noticed it. The secondary thing that the um, yaw damper does in, in the 737 is it coordinates the turns. So on smaller aircraft, when you are flying along and you're turning, the pilots need to input rudder manually. If you don't, once again, if you just roll, you are not going to get a nice clean turn. You're going to get a roll and a yaw that comes after and it's going to feel nasty. If you're a passenger, you will feel like you're being pushed out towards the side of the aircraft or if you're using too much rudder it will feel like you're being pushed inwards towards the aircraft but if you do a perfectly coordinated turn you put enough aileron in and enough rudder in it will be a beautiful turn and if you're sitting holding a cup of coca-cola or coffee or whatever you will not feel a thing if you just sit, feel like you're sitting with 1g straight down looking out as the aircraft is banking maybe 30 degrees this is what the yaw damper does for us, right? In a, in a Boeing, we never need to put any rudder in as we're turning. We're only turning the yoke and the yaw damper feels how much we're turning and it's putting in the perfect amount of rudder to get a perfectly coordinated turn. It also does something called uh, gust damping, which is similar. So it's feeling if we're flying along and we get a gust disturbance for whatever reason, it, it inputs as much rudder needed in order to make sure that the aircraft stays stabilized and flying the way it should. So the yaw damper is a very handy little thing to have, um, but it's not crucial. Okay, It is uh, handled by one of the hydraulic systems. If it fails, if the hydraulic systems fail, for example, the yaw damper will fail as well. But the aircraft is perfectly able to fly without the yaw damper. It will just feel a little bit more um, uncomfortable. We do have a secondary a standby yaw damper that uh, comes in if we would lose all hydraulics. And that is because if we would lose all hydraulics, then it will be really hard to control the aircraft and we do need um, the standby hydraulic system to come in and help us do the turning and maneuvering of the aircraft. Okay, so is the Dutch roll dangerous? The answer to that is no, Dutch roll in itself is not dangerous, okay? It is a perfectly normal movement. If the aircraft is well constructed, then it should oscillate itself out. And if you just leave it alone, the aircraft will, after a few oscillations, return to stable flight again. But there has been incidents involving Dutch roll. And the reason to that tends to be that the pilots are making improper inputs of the rudder in order to counteract the perceived Dutch roll. The balance system that we have, that humans have, is not sensitive enough to feel when this Dutch roll is starting. And this means that we, not unlike the fin itself, is going to put in the impact input too late. And if you do that, you're just going to make the Dutch roll worse. Now, a very famous example of that was a, uh, a delivery flight that happened back in 1959, where a Boeing 707 was being ferried to the customer from, uh, from Boeing. And the delivery crew was scheduled to do a flight test, a delivery test that they always do. Part of that test was turning off the yaw damper. Now, when they turned off the yaw damper, uh, the, um, the aircraft was in the controls of a fairly inexperienced pilot. And the Dutch roll started. The pilot started counteracting, but like I said, it was too late and too much input. So the Dutch roll got worse and worse. And as that movement got worse, the pilot inputted more and more opposite rudder. And at a certain point, there was so much rudder input that the G-forces ripped three out of the four engines off the wings of the aircraft. And the aircraft had to make an emergency landing on a riverbed and um, four out of the eight people on board lost their lives. So that was a very tragic incident. But once again, that was not due to the, the Dutch roll in itself. It was because of the improper handling of the Dutch roll. Now, a, very, a more recent event happened back in 2005 to an Air Transat Flight 961, I think it was, uh, where they suffered a rudder failure at altitude. 
And because the rudder was not working, now when the Dutch roll started, there was no way to counteract it. And the Dutch roll created so much movement that one of the cabin crew got injured as part of it. But the aircraft managed to get down and landed safely at the destination anyway. So there has been some incident involving Dutch roll, but generally in itself, the Dutch roll is just a phenomenon that is based on the aerodynamics of the aircraft, the fundamentals of the aircraft. And as you can see, understanding the physics behind that, understanding how and why an aircraft is stable in the roll axis or in the yo axis and how those forces interact with each other is crucial for you in order to understand your ATPL theory that you will be tested on as part of your flight training. Okay, And this is why I am so happy and so proud to be sponsored by Brilliant.org because this is exactly the kind of things that you will understand if you go through their courses. They have a lot of interactive courses in, for example, how to do problem solving um, in a fun and interactive way. They will show you how to solve it in case you can't solve it by yourself. And uh, there's also a mathematics kind of course which brings you from very fundamental mathematics throughout all the way up to very advanced mathematics. So if you need to brush up on that, maybe it's been a while, like in my case, since you were actually studying it in school, well then using Brilliant is a brilliant way of doing exactly that. And like I was saying at the beginning of the video, if you're struggling to come up with a good gift to someone, maybe your uncle or aunt or someone who's always, you know, solving Sudoku puzzles or things like that. Well, in that case, go down here, use the link below. The link below, which is brilliant.org slash mentorpilot, will give you 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant. And I'm sure that this is something that they will appreciate rather than something um, materialistic. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are, guys. And like always, go into the Mentor Aviation app. There's also links down here to the app. It's absolutely free to download it. It's a great way to keeping up with aviation news. Um, we will be pushing out news. There will be news constantly coming up. And obviously, you can talk to me or other real pilots in there as well as aviation enthusiasts. Have an absolutely fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.